Hello again YouTube, my name is Carl, welcome back. Today we're going to find out if a VFR flight in southern Alberta is actually possible. We're flying the DA-40, so sit back, relax, and let's go. The Diamond series of light aircraft was designed in Austria and is now built in Austria and Canada. I originally planned to do this flight in the DA-20 because it didn't have the fancy avionics suite we see here, but changed my mind and did the DA-40 so I had access to the autopilot so I could show you guys what was going on. So we're going to start off in Lethbridge fly north, past Picture Butte, up to Chestermere, car stairs, and then on to CMF2, which is Maple Lane near Edmonton. Once we got airborne, we're looking for a heading of about 322 degrees and for about 4 nautical miles. We're looking for the bridge just on the west side of Lethbridge before we turn to the right for 004. So there's our bridge. Once we get up to that highway, we're going to want to turn right to 004 degrees. For 10 nautical miles, that'll take us up to Picture Butte. Uh, the app I'm using is called Flight Plan Go. I really, really like it. It's available on iPhone and Samsung products. I run it on my phone and a tablet, which is a Samsung S5e. It is free. Uh, you should check it out. And here we come for a descent into Picture Butte for a quick look before we're going to turn back left for a heading of 336, 21 nautical miles, and that'll bring us up to Travers Reservoir. For those viewers who are new to aviation, VFR stands for visual flight rules. When we're flying VFR, it means we're looking at the ground, so we're typically flying low, uh, slower airplanes, and we're taking note of what's on the ground and comparing that to the map that we're using. So if you go back to the sh picture I just showed you of the map I'm using, the picture has got a lake just north of it, which we can clearly see here. Then we can use the roads and other geographical features to compare to our course to make sure we're flying the direction that we need. IFR, on the other hand, stands for Instrument Flight Rules. During Instrument Flight Rules, we're using our instruments or other navigation aids to get from A to B. via GPS, VUR, and other radio navigation aids. The advantage of IFR over VFR is that you can do it in bad weather when you can't see the ground. Typically, IFR is used a lot in commercial aviation, and that's how you're going to fly, from an exam for example, from Calgary to Toronto.
so we can just start to see Travers Reservoir up ahead. When we hit the intersection of all the arms of the lake, we want to turn right for 341 for another 21 nautical miles. So now I'm starting to try and find some landmarks on the north side of the lake. Eventually we're going to see some buildings right here. That must be the town of Milo. So we're going to want to turn left for 299 and we're going to want to go 42 nautical miles on that heading. So some quick math would be, if we have to go 42 nautical miles and we're traveling over the ground at 120 knots per hour, it should take us about 21 minutes to get where we're going. So if you're flying with a map and compass, you can also use a stopwatch to time your legs to make sure that you're where you're supposed to be when you think you should be. Here we're just going to use the direct and the GPS just to make sure we're staying on course. I know some people might think that using a GPS isn't true VFR, but I can honestly not tell you the last time I flew an airplane that didn't have some kind of GPS installed. And now with Flight Plan Go, as you'll see in a little bit, using the GPS in the tablet itself, it overlays your position on the tablet on the map, so you know exactly where you are all the time. It's pretty awesome. So some of the features I'd be looking for on this leg of the trip would be the lakes to the north east of us, or I guess just north. That's going to be Slobart Lake, Namaka Lake, and Eagle Lake. So they should be off to our right quite a ways, and now we're going to be crossing over the Bow River Valley. We should cross over the valley, if you look at the map again, just to the east of Carsland. So there should be a dam on the river, and then a bridge, and then the town just past that. Carrying on towards Chesapeake, we should have Dalmead Lake just off our left side, which, here we can see it. So if Dalmead Lake's off our left wing, Eagle Lake and the town of Strathmore should be off our right wing, which it is here. And now we're getting our first glimpse of uh, Lake Chesmere just off in the distance.
So as we pass over Chesapeake, we're going to want to pick up a heading of 327 degrees, and we're going to want to travel that for 34 nautical miles. We're going to travel past McDonald Lake on our left, if you're looking at the map, Twin Lakes, so they go directly under us, and we should be a couple miles east of Airdrie. So for this part of the trip, the most notable geographical feature to me was the highway coming north out of Airdrie. So north out of Airdrie, the highway should go just past Crossfield, and then bend left, like you can see on the chart right here, before going back further north. And then Carcer should be just on the other side of that, as Highway 2A splits from Highway 2. And that is Crossfield right off our left wing. And here we can see the Highway 2A goes directly into Carstairs. So here we've picked up our final leg, which is 352 for 96 nautical miles. Some of you have been paying a lot of attention might have seen that the airplane's not always flying the exact same direction I'm telling you it is. Part of that is because the wind is blowing. I checked a couple of ATISs and we did have a wind going in this flight. One thing you'd have to do if you were playing a cross-country flight would take account into the wind and how that's going to change your course or change what direction you have to steer to maintain that direction of the ground for where you want to go. As we fly north, you can see we're going to be coming in over Innisfail, just east of the Innisfail Airport. And just off in the distance now, we can just start to see the Red Deer Airport. So for the next part of the flight, we're going to be having three relatively big lakes off our left side. In order, they should be Sylvan Lake, Gull Lake, and then Pigeon Lake. And then off our right side, we should have the highway going. So if we look at the map, we know we should be passing between Pigeon Lake on the left and Bear Hills Lake on the right. Pretty soon up ahead of us, just to the left should be Long Lake and then Wizard Lake. If I was flying this trip in real life, one of the things I'd be worried about is there is an aerodrome just east of uh, Wizard Lake called Wizard Lake. And I'd be worried about mistaking that airport for where we're going, which is Maple Plain Farm. Maple Lane Farm, sorry.
And there we have it, all the way from Lethbridge, we have found Maple Lane. As you can see, it is just past Wizard Lake, and that's why I'd be a little bit concerned for getting the two confused, seeing as they're so close to each other. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know what you want to see. If you want to see some tutorials for how I fly the airplanes or how I use the avionics, let me know. I haven't done any up until now because I've been able to find other videos on YouTube that have shown me what I needed to know. As before, please like, subscribe, and share the videos. And have a great day.